from the high desert and the great American Southwest. I bid you all good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be in the world's prolific time zones, every single one of them covered by this program, like a blanket. <laughs> Midnight in the desert with Art Bell. And I am Art Bell. Hi. All right. Uh, let me begin with the rules of the show. They're simple. No bad language. And only one call per show. Drama, drama, drama. Uh, it looks like this will be the last show tonight for Leo Ashcraft. Now, um, I wasn't going to talk about this tonight because, um, but I, but I have no choice because Leo is posting on Facebook and all over about it. I'm getting messages. Uh, let's see, what am I getting? Um, for example, now here's one email. Please save dark matter news. It's a great add on to your show. Thank you. From Inpur? Inpu, I guess it is. Anyway, like that. Lots of messages like that. So um, I have no choice but to do what I always do and come to all of you and talk about what's happened. Uh, so um, here it is. Uh, last night when I went on the air, some of you may have noticed that I was a little distracted. Well, I was. Um, Leo and Keith were in this giant battle, hanging up on each other, that kind of deal. Um, and I was in the middle of it, you know, trying to arbitrate. And this has been going on for a long time, and I've been in the middle trying to arbitrate. Well, trying to arbitrate just before the show is really a soul-sucking experience. And so if I sounded distracted, that's why. Today got worse. Today, I woke up with a call from Heather Wade, my producer. Boy, what a job she does. Uh, and she told me that Amy Martin, who is our news writer, that's right, she writes most of the news, actually, and may soon be doing it, um, had told her that uh, Leo had received an offer from coast to coast. Oh, those people. A big money offer. And uh, and uh, he was going to go. And he asked her to go with him. Wanted Amy to go with him. She said, oh, no. No, 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 no. I am uh, loyal to to uh, uh, to, to art, and uh, that's not going to happen. So, finally, late in the day, I, I sent Leo an email and said, "Hey, you know, man up and talk to me," because I had left a message while well, he wasn't there. So he he said, "Okay, you can call me now." So I called him, and uh, he confirmed to me that indeed he had uh, it was true. He had had two. Offers from uh, producers over at Coast hadn't accepted yet, but was quitting anyway because he was angry with Keith. He couldn't do it anymore. He said, and uh, just no matter what, couldn't get along with Keith. So that's what he says. The reason is so. Uh, today has been indeed another day of drama. Um, Basically, uh, you know, he's putting posts up, Leo is now, on his Facebook saying that it's either me or Keith. Me or Keith. Keith and I have been uh, together now for decades. That's not going to change. So whether it's Coast or somebody else, good luck in whatever endeavor comes next uh, for you, Leo. But that's uh, the story. Just, you know, in case people somehow get it wrong or... Don't know what's going on. They'll be able to refer back to this uh, broadcast, the beginning of this broadcast anyway, and know what's been going on. And indeed, when you start arbitrating like that between two people screaming at each other, it's uh, soul-sucking. That's what I call it, soul-sucking. And it's not easy to have happen just before you're going to go on the air. You know, it's one of those things. 
So tonight will be his last broadcasts. All right, let's look briefly at the news. We're going to do open lines, by the way, tonight. Open lines. Guaranteed. Whatever you want to talk about is fair game. Anything paranormal would be good. Now, I oh, I am going to open up a special line. In fact, let me get that out now. In fact, let me mark it down in all of this drama. I didn't even do that. Let's see. Our special line is the Roswell line. That's what it is, by the way. Did you know that? Roswell, New Mexico. That's what you're calling when you call that special line. And it's um, 575, the area code, 208-7787. And our special line tonight is going to be dedicated to uh, anybody out there who claims they are married to an alien. So it's I'm married to an alien line. Area code 575-208-7787, if you're married to an alien. The way I figure it, with Dr. Jacobs and what he said, and then the follow-up to that, there should be a ton of you out there married to an alien. Right? Anyway, that's that's coming up in open lines tonight. Briefly looking at other news... The 26-year-old gunman who opened fire at a community college in an English class, killing nine, was an Army boot camp dropout, we now find out, who studied mass shooters before deciding to become one himself. So this is now a study that people do, I guess. How do you become a mass shooter? Let's probably Google it, I suppose. Good Lord. Millions of people along the East Coast are breathing a little easier after forecasters now are saying Hurricane Joaquin will probably veer out to sea and not harm them. It's still it's still going to throw plenty of water in a place that has plenty too much water now. I mean, they are a mess. This would add to it. So, God, take it away from the East Coast. <laughs> could dump, uh, I don't know, up to 15 inches of rain in places. So, horrible. Get this. A sagging global economy has finally caught up with the U.S. Nervous employers, it seems, pulled back on hiring in both August and September as China's economy slowed. Global markets sank. The market tanked for a while. Things are not good, so they've caught up to us. From the Anomalous.com, the alien hunter shares a bizarre case from India, a case in which a woman claims to have been visited by what she calls the monkey people who left mysterious marks on her body, and also what she says is an implant, get that, right under her skin on the shoulder. Some thinks it looks like a compacted hair follicle. However, Alien Hunter explains that it is in biologic uh, casing of some sort and will be tested. It was removed surgically and they're going to figure out uh, what it is. Isn't that weird? So, I'm anxious. I, I want that report. It's been uh, an unusually uh, busy week for UFO traffic in Texas, seems, for some reason, as bright, flickering UFO-type objects were first spotted back in March in Houston. Is that right, Houston? And then the same lights have reappeared in the same area almost every night. This according to an eyewitness who has gathered so much footage, he is now going to produce a documentary on the lights. We'll have to call them the Houston Lights. (laughs) So, okay. Uh, In a moment, uh, when we come back, open lines. And as I mentioned, anything paranormal is fair game. Anything at all, really. Open lines means that. Open lines. So anything you want to talk about. And one special line for any of you who... And there must be many, 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 many of you out there, according to Dr. 
Jacobs, and according to others that have been on the show lately, it's been sort of a theme, right? We're being invaded. They are here, half human. How many of you think you're married to a half human? So it's, <laughs> it's the I'm married to an alien line. And one more time, it is area code 575-208-7787. We'll take a break. When we come back, I'll do my hated How You Call on Skype lecture, and we'll get underway with nothing but open lines all night long. I'm Art Bell, and this is Midnight in the Desert, raging in the nighttime. Take a walk on the wild side of midnight. From the Kingdom of Nye, this is Midnight in the Desert with Art Bell. Please call the show at 1-952-225-5278. Love. 1-952-CALL. Love. Absolutely love girl harmony. And I actually like this song better than the original. Uh, anyway. All right. So uh, we're about to get underway with open lines. But first... My ever uh, requested, I know, I know, I just can't do it enough, right? If you want to call the show, we have a national number, of course, right? One national number, actually more than that, but one main national number. How about that? Area code 952-225-5278. Once again, one, then 952-225-5278. If you would like to call and sound like you're right here in the studio, we have Skype availability. Actually, two of them. One for North America, one for the rest of the world. If you're in North America, America or Canada, simply go uh, and download Skype to your, um, I don't, I don't care, to anything. I guess to your uh, iPad or your iPhone or your Android, whatever. Download Skype. And once you've done it, Oh, it's ever so easy. Uh, become familiar a little bit with Skype. And then put in, uh, if you're in North America, put in, well, you go to the little plus sign. You'll find it. Uh, it's not where you dial. It's a little plus sign. Add a contact. And add MITD51. As in midnight in the desert, right? MITD51. Then we'll be in your contacts. And when you want to call us, uh, you just go to the contacts. Go to MITD and boom, call us. And boy, does it sound good, usually. I mean, you've got to be close to the mic or using an iPhone or an Android or something. Um, and then if you're outside of North America, you can put in MITD55. Anywhere in the rest of the world, MITD55. After you hit that little plus sign. All right, now that we've got all of that out of the way, Let's rock, shall we? Uh, let's go to um, let's go to the phones first. And you're on uh, midnight on the air. Hi. That's okay. Hello. Hello. Going once, going twice, gone. Um, hi, you're on the air. Art. Yes. Art. Uh, I am right now. This is like a dream come true. I can't believe I'm actually talking to the Art Bell. I can die a happy man. I don't want to die anytime soon, but I can die a happy man. Holy moly. Hopefully um, there's so, more in your life to make you happy than a short conversation with me. My goodness, guy. I, I, I am so uh, flabbergasted right now. I've been listening <laughs> to you since I was like uh, 15, so this is actually like you're like my Johnny Carson. And, and you're like uh, and you're like 60 now, right? Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> you know it. You know it. Uh, my, I, I've had two things that have been bothering me since you have left. Um, the place that will not, not be named, John Teeter and um, uh, uh, um, uh, Bob Lazar. Yes. Any updates on either John Teeter or Bob Lazar? Well, Anything? one one at a time. Uh, John Teeter has not been heard from by anybody. Um, number two, it is a popular misconception that I spoke with John. I did not. I think that right, was on the right. other show. Um, and if he would like to talk to me, he's more than welcome to. In the meantime, we are pursuing other time travelers, and we've got some pretty good ones on the hook. So hang in there. It'll be coming up. Now, uh, it was John Teeter and uh, what else? Bob, Bob 
Bob Lazar. Bob Lazar. Bob is a good friend, has been for a long time. I'm sure he would come on the air if I requested him to, but here's, here's the thing about Bob. His story never changes. And that, is, and that is to his credit. So if I were to have him back now, I mean, he came on and did a long show with me, uh, in which he went through every detail of what he did at Area 51, S4, and, um, that's it. I mean, yes, we could have him back, but it would be a, you know, a kind of a replay of what we've already done. So his story doesn't change. Hey, Mark, one last thing before I, I bounce, uh, from your lovely show. If one day your archives could be opened up, I know many millions of us would be absolutely dance in the streets for joy. Okay, Thank well, you, the ar- and, uh, right. we love you. Okay, we love you. Th- thank you very much. That's an impossibility. Uh, the archives are owned by what is now called iHeartRadio, and uh, uh, that's the old archives. Now we've we have begun to build very substantial archives. I might add on this program. So, um, if you are a time traveler, you've already got hours and hours and hours and hours of archives, and we continue to build new ones every night. Let's go to Skype, and Stephen, hello. Hello, Art. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing fine, actually. Excellent. And speaking of the archives, I wanted to do a quick plug um, for being a time traveler. Um, it was about last week. In the past few weeks, I've been extremely busy, and um, I fell behind on some of the shows. I couldn't get the chance to listen. And right. so I went to the archives. I load them up on a multimedia, uh, like a little MP3 player, and then I played it in my car right. on a long trip. And let me tell you, it sounded absolutely amazing and uh, like the speaker system in my car and it sounded like the whole radio experience i know um the audio that we're able to produce when everything is right is astronomically good and that translates of course to the archives hope you caught up on some good shows what do you hear i did um oh what was the one the last uh about the nuclear i didn't get a chance to listen to the nuclear oh um, well that'll that cheer a, you right that up. was a very interesting show to say the least <laughs> um and uh, i actually had one quick question to you because i know a lot of people want to talk to you but i had an interesting question for you that i don't sure. think i've ever heard you um mention and the question is now that you're back on the air and i i kind of want to ask you how does it make you feel kind of talk about your legacy like how does it make you feel to know that so many people are impacted by your voice alone. And just how does that feel? Like, what have you ever described that before? Huh, no, I haven't, but I'll, I'll try, Stephen. Thank you. Um, yeah, I guess I'm at the age where people begin talking about legacies, right? You're a legend and all this stuff. I hate it. Actually, I hate that stuff. I really do. I, I am still creating, so... I guess that would be my answer. My legacy is not to be written yet because I am still creating. And I guess I'll be doing that all my life. So I speak not of my legacy at this point, nor the legendary stuff. I appreciate it all. It's very nice, but I am still creating. Let's go back to the uh, phones and say, hello there. You are on the air. Hi, Art. This is Flaz von Flerick. I'm listening on shortwave, WTWW, uh, on 5085 kilohertz. Great yeah. signal comes most of the nights, but, you know, it is nice to get on the computer a couple of nights, and when I did that, the, the sound quality was audio, audio stereo, very nice, and I wish I could do it all the time, but I just don't have internet connection where I spend a lot of my time on the continental divide doing astronomy, and because of the dark skies uh, and the proximity to the VLA, we don't have very good internet connectivity there. But I have been exploring this Martian uh, cliff-dwelling creature, which was uh, photographed by oh, photographs. Yeah, I I, that's a hell of a photograph. You know, hold on, sir. If, if You know what? If that's a rock, um, then, then I'll eat it. I don't believe it's a rock at all. That's some kind of creature. I think I knew you'd say that once you studied it. And um, what we have found, we've been doing bio, uh, exobioanalysis, and, you know, back engineering, in other words, back engineering is analysis. So then we reverse that and say, okay, if we were building a Martian creature, how would we do it mm-hmm. and do forward engineering? And what's, what has come from that exercise is we now know how to build a Martian space suit that can take in carbon dioxide, turn it into oxygen for breathing, 
and just use very simple, simple inputs like water and sunlight. Well, that's lovely, but I'm not ready to book a ticket. No, but 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 by, by looking at the physiology of how this Martian creature works. Oh, by by the way, uh, let me add one more thing. Uh, how to build a Martian alien or a Martian creature? I guess would be uh, home world to the Martian, right? So um, it seems to me, from almost all the pictures I've looked at of Mars, and I've looked at uh, thousands, uh, the best way to build a Martian creature would be with rocks. Well, there's plenty of that available, but there's also <laughs> yeah. carbon dioxide, and carbon dioxide can be turned into oxygen just the way it's been done on Earth with diatoms. Uh, we've got, I think I sent you some links to pictures of diatoms on Mars as well as of, of the uh, creature yes. itself. And the diatoms is what generated the oxygen on Earth. So we used to have an atmosphere that was rich in carbon dioxide just like Mars, and a lot of nitrogen and carbon dioxide, nothing to breathe. All right, well, now, listen way- to me. If you're if you're really serious about this, um, in my opinion, sir, what you should do is immediately get hold of NASA because you make a lot of money. Uh, I, I don't know if NASA's figured it out or um, if this is new technology. Sounds new. And so if you really can do that, then by all means, my goodness. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Definitely. Let's go to uh, Oklahoma City. Hello there. Hello. Yes, sir. Oh, hi, Art. Yeah, this is Mike. Uh, we're just south of Oklahoma uh, City there. Yes, sir. Uh, hey, uh, enjoy your show, man. I'm sure glad you got back on, et cetera, et cetera. Get all that out of the way. Um, I've had some very close encounters with um, UFO craft and the beings. That okay, well, well you, you know what, sir? You're on my I'm married to an alien line is what you're on. Oh, I have this down as your Roswell line. You said 575-208-7787. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah Isn't that, that your Roswell? Uh, it is, but that's my I'm married to an alien line. Didn't you hear me at the beginning? Wouldn't you know it? <laughs> so, uh, are you married to an alien? No, sir. All right. Well, I'm sorry. I've got to enforce the rules or it doesn't work. Thank you for the call. I apologize. Uh, but really, the rules, the rules is the rules. <laughs> sorry about that. Let's go to uh, Mike on Skype. Hello, Mike. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Hello. Um I want to tell you about something that happened to me. Uh, I used to grow tobacco down near Port Burwell um, on the on the shore of Lake Erie, about a mile from Lake Erie. Yes, sir. And there's a small graveyard there. Yes. And everyone wonders where a lot about, and they see things. And the people that work at the nursery say they see. Uh, um, a hearse go down the road and then disappears in front of their eyes while they're driving down that road. So you mean like ghostly things? Yeah, and the horse drawn with horses. You know, <laughs> yeah, this is crazy. That's more like so some that, kind of a time slip or something, huh? Yeah, well, yeah. And, and all over my farm, people are seeing shadow people and stuff from, from that time. When we were uh, hoeing tobacco one time, we were hoeing tobacco down the field, and, and then all of a sudden we see these people going into that graveyard and uh, putting flowers on the grave. Is the graveyard on your farm? Yes, it's on our property. Well, see, there but, is there is your first problem. Um, probably it's not good to have a graveyard on your farm. Well, it's not our choice, Art. Well, I, I, I understand. Is, uh, um, the, I think it's called the Berean... Um, I could look it up for you. I get, it's Wolfman here, so I, I can get back to you on that and give you the details. Okay. I'm just um, saying. I'm just saying. You know, graveyard. Anyways, anyways one time I was walking down that road at night because it spooks everyone out, right? So. Yes. Wow. Okay, this is the thing that I want you to hear, Art. Okay, go. I saw, uh, like, okay, this is strange. I'm going to go right into it. Please. Uh, um, um, uh, fireflies follow me around. That's bad. Uh, I'm 
No, I actually they they give me power. You got to really hurry, sir. We've got uh, news coming. Okay, anyways, the fireflies were in the trees. They're following me. I went to the fireflies. All of a sudden, this thing comes out. I said, "Show yourself." I knew there was something there, and this in a firefly comes out in front of my face and then blows up into a two foot sphere of 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 light. Holy mackerel! And I can't. I don't understand what that is. I, I'd like to. I'd like uh, my you brother. can't. Uh, uh, what did I say about bad language? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Art. So a firefly it scared the crap out of me. Okay, I'll, I'll let that go. Uh, so a firefly blew up into something two feet wide. Is that yes. right? Yes, two feet wide in front of my face, and okay, I so. could feel the sentience coming off of it. Yes. Well, next time you're going to want to swat it faster. Well. It, I had a staff with me that I carry because of wolves and creatures because it's way out, in, you know, it's in the boonies, right? Yeah, but you can't even fly with the staff. But uh, this, the staff didn't make me feel comfortable. I ran as fast as I could. See, so I, I would have done the same thing, sir. Okay, thank you very much for the call. We're up against the news here. Uh, it is open lines tonight. Anything, obviously, as you can tell already, anything you want to talk about is fair game. From the high desert, this is midnight in the desert, raging in the nighttime. doesn't screen calls. We trust you, but remember, the NSA, well, you know. To call the show, please dial 1-952-225-5278. That's 1-952-CALL-ART. Well, all right, uh, we're in open lines. Anything you want to talk about is absolutely fair game. However, we do have a special line. It's called the I'm Married to an Alien line. That's right. I'm married to an alien line, and I think it should be full. It is full. We'll go to one in a moment. And it is full because if uh, Professor Jacobs and others are right, there's lots and lots of hybrids out there, you know, half half us, half them. And uh, there is nothing closer than a marriage. Husband and wife, they know every little mood of the other. So if you have detected that your other, as it were, is um, no longer fully human, then I want to hear from you. And let us go there to I'm Married to an Alien Line, um, way back in the Midwest. Hi, you're on the air. Hi, Art. Yes. Art, it's an honor and a privilege. I've been listening to you for years, and uh, just glad to hear you back. Well, thank you. Good to be back. And you are obviously, because of this line, you're married to an alien, right? Well, I uh, I questioned it for years, what was wrong with her, but after listening to Dr. Jacobs the other night, now I know. All right. What are the, I mean, you know, what are the signs? <laughs> I mean, hopefully she's uh, she's not there listening, right? No, no, she's not. <laughs> okay, good. I don't, I don't want to hear a sudden shot in the background or a scream and then know you're gone. Uh, so you think she's an alien? Why? I mean, what are the signs that she displays? There's absolutely no... I've never met anyone like her that has no emotion, uh, no compassion, no... I mean, it's just a stone-cold, constant, serious uh, demeanor about her. Really? That cold? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, she she has tried to destroy me more than once. <laughs> oh my God! But I mean, just stony cold. I can't believe it. That's uh, that's horrible. Hold on a second. I just let me get in the mood for this. You're as cold as ice. You're willing to sacrifice our love. Does that about wrap it up? That's the theme song right there. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's horrible. I, I, I mean, I, she probably wasn't that way in the beginning, or you wouldn't have married her, right? That's correct. 
That's correct. And as soon as, and I, I'm sure you've heard those stories before. As soon as you say "I do," uh-huh. then, then all of a sudden everything changes. And and honestly, I, I for years I just I couldn't believe anyone could be like this. But I mean, she she obviously has to respond when you speak. But it's it's kind of like a cold. I mean, how would you describe her voice when she talks to you? It's sort of a no, oh, it's 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 uh, monotone. It's uh, uh, you know the the eyes. I mean, people that I will out. do as you ask, honey. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't that either. <laughs> <laughs> you will do as I ask, honey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, you will do as I ask. And has has it been uh, ongoing that way for how long now? Oh, over 15 years. And if you disobey? Uh, oh, there's been some... Uh, Awful things? Horrible, horrible things. We yes. don't even and want to I talk about them here on the air, right? Exactly, because I will not fight back, so... <laughs> so these are like scars that will be with you forever. Oh, I'm afraid so. Um, another, so now, Dr. Jacobs, uh, sir, says that these are not friendly aliens, and I guess... You're ready to confirm that fact. Absolutely, I agree 100. Uh, percent My mother thinks that she's a vampire, but I think, I, after listening to Doctor Jacobs, I think she's an alien. So. so, not only, not only your wife. <laughs> oh God, this is unbelievable. All right, well, um, you know, I wish Leo luck earlier. I, I really wish you luck, sir. Well, I appreciate it, Art, because uh, uh, you need I'm it. Trying to distance myself, but uh, I hope I can do it. You know, fully uh, get away, one hundred percent. Awful. All right, sir. Thank you for the call, and uh, good luck. Thank you, Art. I appreciate talking to you right. so much. Yeah, take care. That's a sad story. That's a really sad story. I'm not sure I can go on picturing him. Night after night after... Uh. Cody, hello there. You're on the air on Skype. Oh, hi. 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 Um, uh, it's actually, uh, I guess I can consider myself one of the younger viewers uh, of the show. I've been listening to you only for like a couple of years. I suppose you could stare at the computer, you know, as you, as you listen. So you're a listener, actually. Yeah. I mean, uh... I've just, like, actually, the way I heard of you, I actually had to go through, like, the old archives of, like, your old Ghost to Coast shows, and that's how I discovered you. That's right. And uh, and I just thought you were uh, so much better than, I guess, the older show, oh, as well, you would put it. So um, I want to talk about uh, my dad. Before you do, would you like to express any, I don't know, sympathy, compassion for the last caller? I'm, I'm broken up about that. Uh... Not much. I not, really not have to go saying that kind of thing. All right. Okay. Um, anyway. But my story kind of revolves around my dad. See, okay. he's like, he's an electrician. Yes. And so, but he, in the past, he's had his own little experiences with like the paranormal and stuff like that, with, like Ouija boards. He's had like just little small like trinkets of like events that he couldn't explain. But, and he's told me all about them. But the one he that always sticks with me is when, uh, he uh, went to go work at someone's house, and because uh, he's an electrician, as I said, and uh, uh, he the uh, people at the house seemed to be like, you know, normal people, but he kind of picked up of uh, you know kind of weird stuff, yeah, like sure. he saw like uh, books about hit a lot of books on Hitler in like some of the rooms, and a lot of weird bird masks, and Ooh. he had to get to this one room to work on their fuse box, and yeah. they're like. Uh, we have to clear a bit of stuff out, so can you come the next day? And he's, you know, he's like, okay. Uh, so he comes the next day, and then he opens the room, and what do you know? On the ground is a giant pentagram. So, Ooh. yeah. So he's thinking, oh, I just better finish my job and get the heck out of here. I'm, but I'm he, trying to sit here and imagine what was in the room that they cleared out. Good God. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, he had, anyways, he had uh, part of his job, he had to fish the wires through the attic. So he was going through the attic, and then as he was clearing the insulation, he found this little leather box, this little leather box, and it had this red wax stamp right in the middle with this symbol. He couldn't, uh, he didn't know what it was, so 
he actually kind of just sat there for quite a bit of time just staring at this box, and he was like, should I open this, or? Mm, probably not. <laughs> yeah, he decided, like, he was like, you know, knowing my luck, I'll probably release hell on the world. Yes. So he just kind of, like, put it back underneath, finished, finished his job, and got out. And, you know, a couple months later passed, and then, uh, uh, my grandfather, uh, came and he handed him the newspaper. It turned out that, uh, house got raided by the police. Oh. Yeah, and, well, no, that's about it. It's just, he what? didn't know what else happened. He kind of... He didn't know what up, they were raided for? Uh, I guess just, uh, satanic ritual activity. That's not much. illegal. Uh. Remember, or, we live in the, in the home of the brave. Well, no, I'm in the free. So. You're allowed to do that stuff. Where, where do you live? Uh, Canada. Where? Canada. Toronto. Oh, can Canada. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, maybe yeah. in, oh. So yeah, in Canada, I don't know if they in did Canada, for illegal activity or not, but. Wow. Uh, I, I guess he, and he never really heard about like anything else. He never heard about like any of, like if that box was ever found, but I always kind of just wondered what was in that box. So. Scary stuff, eh? Yeah, and uh, before I just hang up, because it is a pleasure to talk with you, I think I have a recommendation for a future guest, okay. because you're into the whole Ouija board stuff, and uh, no, there's I'm this not. guy on No, the... I'm not, no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I know, and, but uh, I know uh, there's this guy on YouTube, uh, his uh, page is called uh, Live Sci-Fi, and all he does is just sit around playing with Ouija boards, and he records what, he also has a recording device, and he records what he hears, mm -hmm. and he actually picks up some pretty scary stuff, so that's... Well, I think bully that's, for him, but my estimation is one day they'll be picking him up uh, in little yeah. pieces somewhere. I just somewhere. think that's the type of guy you should get in contact with for, like, a future show. Well, um, I'll think about it. Thank you. All right, thanks. All right, you have a good night. So the little box virtually said everything but Pandora on it. <laughs> Don't forget, folks, if you think you're married to an alien, and he or she is not within earshot... Difficult at this time of night, I'm sure. Uh, call I'm Married to an Alien line at area code 575-208-7787. The last story was gripping and uh, scary beyond all belief. Remember she told him, I, essentially she is in charge. You will do as I say from this moment on. <laughs> right after the vows. Uh, hello there. In Washington, I think you're on the air. Hello, Art. How hey, are you doing? I'm doing fine. Where, in fact, are you, actually? I'm in Washington, D.C. I, Art, I have to tell you, I've been followed by the presence or the spirit of my grandfather for a long time. How do you know it's your grandfather? And the things that I've talked to my mother uh, and my aunt about, about their life. Yes. But only he would know. And I know it's my grandfather because he even, t he, my grandfather used to build houses and he built the church back home in North Carolina. And it, I'm building in my mother and my aunt's house right now. And Are you able to I, see him? I can feel his presence. And Art, it's incredible because he tells me things to do. Like I started my own publishing business with my fiance. And can I mention the name of it, Art? No, I'd rather you don't. Okay. I, I know you want the plug, well, but I'm sorry, but really not. Don't need to plug, Art. We're, we're pretty good as we are right now. Anyway, so you, you uh, okay. And he's told me things to do, and it's been... You know, working consecutively. I mean, from the business to working with my mom and aunt, I know it's my grandfather. I can feel his presence. And sometimes I can even smell his tobacco. Oh. Okay. Well, uh, listen, what can I tell you, my friend? But uh, hang in there, and uh, hopefully your granddad's a good guy. It'll be good advice, and you'll rise to the top. Thank you, Art. Hey, right. Art, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. Very nice. Going to I'm married to an alien line, I believe, in New Orleans, Louisiana. Hello. Hello there. 
Are yes. you? There? Oh, you are there. Okay, good. Oh, I'm sorry. I was talking to you for uh, for a second, but you must not have heard me. I was talking to myself over here. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Uh, you're in the New Orleans area, right? Yes. Married, yes. married to an alien for real? Yes, I actually am. Okay. All right. Let's let's go through this. I mean, when did you realize that your wife was, well, one of them? Okay. Well, you see, here's the thing. Um, you, you, you don't really, okay, you see, it's not like I married a gray alien from the sky that she crash landed oh, and it was like, ECR. I know, you know, I know. oh, I know, listen, yeah. uh, according yeah. to Dr. Jacobs, they look absolutely normal. Well, this is, here's the thing, um, this is more normal, not, not the whole Marion part. I mean, well, that's normal too. But there's there's a lot. Most, I'd say about three percent of the population, more or less, is you or you know, tares or aliens. You know, it it's it's been going on forever. Art, and the fact of the matter is that I ended up marrying one, and I found out after the fact. After the fact, I mean, I. I'm In other words, you you think she go. she was converted after you married her? Well, here's the thing. She's very. She's, she's nice. Um, I'm not going to say my wife's name, Cynthia. No, don't. Sorry. Well, you just said it. Gosh. Okay. Anyway. Do you want to, do you want to terminate this call before you get in trouble? No, no, no. No, all right. Then she, tell me about her. Okay. okay. Here's the thing. She is a person. She acts like a person. She, you know, she, she's a hardworking woman. She has a great job. She is a person. Thing in a matter, fact of the matter is, is, the type of alien she is, um, her species sends people, sends people, <laughs> sends their their kind. I'm trying to say the right nomenclature down to Earth, and basically in human form, but spiritually, and it's not like appearance wise, but spiritually, the soul, the brain, the inner workings, the inner tubing, if you will, that's all alien. The inner tubing. That is what you said. You don't have to get any more graphic uh, than that. Yeah. Uh, the inner uh, yeah. Be, okay. Wow. You no, know, uh, I'm trying to speak radio lingo. I'm starting but, to get yeah. scared. The inner, inner, yikes. Yes, but this. Don't don't give me any more on not, that. I've been, that's enough. Okay. They're not here to invade the planet. They're not here. It was basically to originally to save their species. You've heard about the alien abductions where, you know, people were abducted and guys, you know, their seed was taken from them and stuff like that, and it was to help save the species. Well, this was the same. This was another route to help save the species. The only difference is it started out as an experiment, and then, of course, once you have people here, once you have the aliens here, mm. they begin to breed, they begin to populate, yes. the bloodline goes down. I mean, Art, you might have alien blood in your veins, for all we know. And I know my son does, and my son is looks just like me and not like her. But well, he, uh, you're, I, I mean, that. you would have to say your son certainly has alien blood in his veins, right? She is half alien. Her mother is a human being. Her mother was actually born in uh, Oahu, Hawaii. Her father... Sounds is like the president's like story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> her father is just like her. <laughs> yes. She, you know, alien on the inside, human on the outside. Right. But her uncle and I believe her grandmother, who I haven't met, um, is actually from um, another dimension. I Another can't dimension. even pronounce the name. Okay, how does this, if, if, if you don't mind, how does this manifest in your wife? What is it you notice about your wife that makes you even believe this? She bleeds green. I, I, she does what? She bleeds green. She bleeds green? Yeah, oh yeah. Yes. Like light green? Dark green? Shocking green? Or like, uh, it's like uh, the the baby food green color, you know. What oh I'm God, Gerber green. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to. Uh, so that's why I tell her not to pick uh, roses with thorns and stuff. You don't want the green blood coming from the fingers and stuff. Oh. And, yeah. I asked her, and I joke around all the time. I asked her. Well, that's no joke. That's no well, joke. I joke. 
I joke around and ask her if she could take me back to her home planet. You know, it's it, it's it's no joke. It ends up in fights all the time. And sure uh, it does. And I mean, I don't even know if she has a birth control. I mean, even by saying this right Maybe now, maybe she doesn't even need it. Well, she does. I mean, you've got a son, right? It is by her. I know. I mean, if Trump becomes president, he hears I'm actually not uh, actually married to an illegal alien from outer space. Who knows what he's going to do, you know? <laughs> well, uh, I'll uh, tell you this. You'll have to fill out one hell of a lot of paperwork. Well, look, here's the thing. Um, it's hard enough uh, getting my bride here from the Philippines. You, you try it from another planet or galaxy. And Any idea where she's from, by the way? Um... It's way at the star system, way, way, way out. You know the um, God, what's that one star called? The the big red one, um, Mars. Canis Majoris. Oh, that's a Majoris. star. I'm sorry. Uh, it's so even past Alpha Centauri, way out there. Yeah. All right, and, uh, uh, all right. So I've got to leave the line, but but bleed green, my God. This is midnight in the desert. I'm Art Bell. Can you imagine that, Gerber? Green. <laughs> ah, from the high desert, it just keeps coming. Midnight in the Desert, let the phone ring until answered. These calls are unscreened for your listening pleasure. Call 1-952-CALL-ART. That's 1-952-225-5278. Open lines, anything goes, anything at all. But we do have a special line, and it's called I'm Married to an Alien Line. So if you're married to an alien for real... Uh, the number is area code 575-208-7787. Only if you're married to an alien, okay? So if you look in your loved one's eyes and you see Gerber Green <laughs> or whatever. Oh, look at this. I'm sorry about this. Um, when we go into open lines, we get so many calls that Skype throws up its hands and quits. <laughs> it just did that. So, um, everybody, uh, please be patient with Skype. I'll bring it back up. I can do that when it, it, it just quits. <sighs> so, keep trying. Uh, as with the phones, you know, if Skype doesn't answer, try and try again. Uh, it will eventually, as I'm about to prove now, and go outside the country to Mark. Hello, Mark. Yeah, hi, Art. Good morning. Good morning. Or good evening to you. I have a true story. Now, I'm not claiming causality here, but this was very strange. All right. In, in May of this year, May 2nd, actually, I was on a flight from Frankfurt to Sevilla, Spain. Right. On Lufthansa flight number 1140. Wow. Right. Sitting on the window near the wing. And I decided I was going to try and do an experiment. And I'm not claiming causality, but I looked out the window after about an hour into the flight, and I looked up and I concentrated, and I said, if there are aliens out there, please give me a sign. And, and you wanted this sign while you were in the middle of a, a probably at 30,000 feet? Yes, and we were just about to go over the Pyrenees, and I concentrated for about 15 to 20 minutes, and I was sitting next to the left wing, and about 20 minutes after I was really seriously concentrating on this, yes. the engines cut back uh, substantially, almost to a glide, and the pilot came on the uh, microphone on the, on the, on the uh, intercom system and announced that there is a, in German he said, there's a kleiner riss, a small crack in the cockpit windshield. Whoa! This is true. Now, I'm not claiming causality, but this is very strange that this happened within 15 to 20 minutes of me really concentrating and looking out the window. And we Holy made a, a pretty mackerel. much a wide emergency landing in Madrid. Oh, my God. And what what a story. Um, 
True story. Well, you know, uh, you better time your wishes and your, your intent uh, throwing better. Um, well, let me tell you, when we got off the plane, the cockpit door was open, and the pilot did a wonderful job, but he understated what really happened. The, the, the windshield did not blow out, but it was completely shattered. It was still in the window. It oh was still God. in the window frame, but it was completely shattered. It was not a small crack, as he had told us. Hmm. Well, they always underplay that stuff, Mark, of course. Oh, so I don't know if I should take responsibility for that, but that really happened. Well, it sounds like you are taking responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, Mark. Bye. Uh, Bye. I think he's in Germany. I hope I got that right. Anyway. <laughs> Can you imagine? You certainly would imagine that you did it. I, on my, um, I am married to an alien. Oh, he gave up. Well, maybe not. Maybe I punched the wrong line. Hi there. Hey. I'm, I'm married to an alien, right? That's you. Well, I was about 13 years ago. Uh huh. So I came to my you... senses. Yes. And got the hell out of that deal. Did you, um, when when you filed for divorce, I'm assuming you filed? No, no, she did. She uh, okay. she couldn't stand me either. Oh. But here's the deal. They took us to the home planet. What do you mean they? The aliens, her, her home planet, the alien masters took us to the home planet. Holy smokes. And, well, what they were doing was doing research on the mating and reproductive habits of the human species. And they so they there, they wanted to observe you in marital bliss? But basically, procreation. That's stuff. horrible. Uh, absolutely horrible. And they gave a demonstration with two of their aliens, two of their creatures. They wrapped their tentacles it's together. like alien, don't, don't tell me, sir, alien porn, so to speak. Well, probably to get you in the mood. I, I, I'm sure it would ruin the whole experience. I mean, tentacles. The thing is, it only lasted about eight seconds. They they shuddered and vibrated <laughs> a little bit, yeah. and then the female alien's back opened up, and yeah. the baby popped out. A baby alien. That and quick? They said, well, wait a minute. Yes, that fast? Yes. yes. And they said, "Well, how do you mate on Earth?" So we. <laughs> You know, hesitantly did it, and oh, they, sure. were, they got kind of a look. I, 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 I don't even know how to ask this, but I, I've got to ask. Um, when requested to do such a thing after being taken to another planet with a bunch of aliens standing around, uh, probably rooting you on or what, whatever the alien equivalent of a root is, um, how could you, how? Could you do that? I mean, well, Art, obviously we did it for science. We did it. Oh, really? Yeah, but not our for, science. It's no. their science. Oh, well, yeah. But the thing is, they they got a puzzled look on their little alien faces, and they said, "Well, where's the baby?" <laughs> and we explained <laughs> we explained to them that on Earth nine it months, takes nine, nine months, nine months. And so I'm curious, sir. Nine months later, did what happened? Well, we didn't stick around. They apparently weren't very impressed, and oh. they kept wondering why I was kind of hurrying there toward the end. Mm-hmm. But so, uh, was... did, did you have a child with this alien? No, it uh, it turned out I was was shooting intergalactic blanks. But... Intergalactic blanks. All right, sir. Uh, you could not have done a better job. Thank you for that call. Married to an alien. And I, I don't even, I'm not going to repeat the rest of it. That was, that was truly uber, wasn't it? Uh, let's give Michael a try on Skype. Hello, <laughs> Michael. Hello. Uh, how are you doing? Can you hear me? Or... I hear you fine. Michael, do you have any comment on the concept of intergalactic blanks? Intergalactic? Ne- uh, yeah, ne- never mind. It, it was just a joke. What's up? Well, I'm uh, I'm the guy that sent you the audio on your or a video on your dream. Oh, uh, oh, you're uh, the one who put that together. Yeah. That is so yes. 
cool. It is so cool, Michael. And anybody who has not seen it, Keith, back up to the top of the site with it, please. Uh, I'm, Keith will know what I'm talking about. Uh, put it back up to the top of the site. This is Michael, who put together the animation of my dream of encountering an alien saucer while I was in a bus. It's the doggone thing you've ever seen. Uh, Michael, how, you're very talented. How do you do that? Well, I've, I've been doing 3D animation. It's just, just a hobby for about three years, or for about ten years. And, uh, and I, I always listen to your programs. And I heard your, uh, your story about the dream. And I thought, I'm going to make an animation about that. Man. And I sent it to, uh, Keith because I can't, you know, post it. I sent it to Keith. So, and I said, if you like it, you can post it. <laughs> and, uh, All right, let me did. give you full credit. You want to give your last name on the air? Uh, Mike Gingrich. Michael Gingrich. Right. Uh, G-I-N-G-R-I-C-H. And you deserve the credit because, man, that thing is awesome. So now it's it's back up at the top of the page, Michael, and uh, everybody can go over to ArtBell.com right now and take a look. Well, I, you know, I really, pre- the thing I appreciated is that you liked it and that Keith liked it. And uh, I really I, appreciate no, I, that. I didn't like it. I loved it. And so did Keith. Keith sent me a um, a text saying, oh, God, Art, you got to see this right now. And so I took a look and I just laughed and laughed and laughed. Great job, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, buddy. That's uh, that's Michael Gingrich. Wow, the guy who did that animation. You've got to see that animation. Seriously. It's at artbell.com. By now, I would ex- probably suspect Keith has it to the top of the page. But it was really cool. Really, really cool. Phoenix, Arizona, you're on the air on the phone. Hi. Hello, uh, Art. Hello. Yes. Well, that was pretty quick. I This is uh, Ryan out in uh, Sonoran Desert, Buckeye, Arizona again. It's uh, great to hear your voice out here. If you're complaining, okay, I can but- put you back on hold. Oh, no, no. When I oh. called before, like, usually there's a wait, so I was just... Uh, well, uh, the, the phone, lines, phone lines are full. Uh, I just happened to pick that line, so lucky you. That's fine. Uh, is uh, how, How's uh, Asia doing? Is she doing better? Yes. Uh, she went through a week of being at home, missing school. Must be heartbreaking. Missing school, yes, and, yeah. uh, yeah, that's pretty serious stuff. You know, she had a hundred three and a half temperature, and that scared the you-know-what out of me. Yeah, I, I hope um, she's doing better, and I'm, you know, I'm glad that, uh, to hear that. I was just going to throw a couple of things at you here, and um, how about, have you thought about bringing back the honors to the final call, saying goodnight to uh, the world in America, and have you thought about... Uh, Remember, you used to do that years ago, the voice box, when JC would call you, you would <laughs> have that f- funny sound. Uh, yes, I'm the one who put toy. that voice box together and um, adapted it to broadcast. But JC is missing. Uh, JC may yeah, have that. passed into the next life. You know, you got to wonder yeah. how he's doing, too. When he got to the gates, I wonder if they recognized him. Oh, you're our guy. You were the one calling Art Bell, right? Yeah, he used to call you the devil and all this, but he would listen right. and call you, so that was interesting. So he would call you all these names, but he would still listen. So Oh, yes. And uh, it was funny when one night he called you. This is back in 97. I don't know if you remember it, but he used to tell you that he used to shoot at cats with a pellet gun or something, and with the voice box, he would you would say something about I said something and praise the awful. Lord. Yeah. Um, well, anybody who shoots pellets at cats, uh, ought to be horse whipped. And if you're still alive, JC, and you hear that, uh, there you go. I'm a cat person. Sorry. All right. Hey, well, listen. Thing, Art, this is, can I, uh, ask you one more thing? Yes, 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 sure. Oh, great. This is about, uh, rest in peace to Colonel Philip J. Corso. Uh, yes, indeed. There's been a lot of, uh, people who have come out and disputed some of the things he said. I know. And, I understand some of it, okay? I read the Day After Roswell book, but I look at his record and how honorable he was, served the country I know. during World War II, highly decorated, 
in that classic show on July 23rd, 1997, with yes, Colonel Alexander and... Boy, you're a good record keeper. Uh, you know, uh, here's yes, what sir, I would I say. Am. Here's what I would say. I, I would say that the way he laid it out seemed logical to me. In other words, if you were going to integrate alien technology from a crash... That's how you would do it. You would parcel it out slowly to industry and defense, and that's how you do it. So it it made sense to me. And wash your hands from it and let the uh, let the companies take credit for. You've got it. The the thing that was uh, about that show, which was crucial, is that uh, uh, Alexander uh, backed up what he was saying. Is where he was at. His record. His. That's right. All. And and that's very. This is my point of all this. The very end of the show, I'm, I'm amazed that people haven't picked this up. But at the end of the show, you asked uh, Colonel Corso, "Why are you coming for now, Colonel?" And he told you something that was very telling to me that stuck with me all these years. And he said he's doing it that he did it for the grandkids, for his boys, that he wanted to have a record for them. So I don't think somebody who is at the end of their, their life because he died the following year, sadly, right. that's and. Right. He said that he wanted the record for his grandkids. I just can't see someone like that disrespect his family, disrespect his, uh, dishonor his grandkids. And I just wanted to put that out there is to me that what's what really convinced me that he was telling the truth. Good for you. And I, I thought he was telling the truth too, sir. Thank you for the call. I thought Colonel, Colonel Corso absolutely was telling the truth. And I, you know, when you spend hours interviewing every, uh, somebody like this. Um, I'm not saying that uh, you have an absolute truth detector, but my BS detector is pretty darn good. And Corso came across as absolutely the real thing to me. So, you know, I'm not sure what to say, except um, I, I think he was a real deal. And beyond my thinking he was a real deal, the way he laid it out, as I just mentioned, made sense to me. If you were going to release new technology that um, had come into your hands as a result of a crash at Roswell, that's exactly how you would do it without creating, uh, you know, all kinds of uh, very serious suspicion. Don't you think? I do. Uh, Let's go to Daniel on Skype. Daniel, hello. Hello, Art. Hi. Roswell's. Thank you. Hey, I wanted to know if it was possible. I know you've been uh, bringing a lot of the good things from the from the past shows back again, and I'd like to know if you, we could possibly do a a, a mass uh, concentration experiment uh, for some positive uh, results to happen. And also, I have another comment. I have a question about uh, what happened between you and uh, Jimmy Church. Uh, he's he's claiming now that your famous uh, phone call was was a. Uh, was a fake by a person who called in his, and is claiming that he did it as a host. I have no idea. Jimmy Church uh, is, a, oh, let's see, one thing at a time here. Uh, he's a guy who claimed uh, that he had this deep association with me, sir, that um, I called him all the time. I listened to his show constantly, and he was filling in for me and all this kind of stuff, and it was all baloney. I had talked to him one time in my life and one time only on the phone in a group call. That was it. Um, but it's, he, the way he sounded and the postings he was making, it was like uh, he was part of my genetic family or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> honest with you. So, you know, people do that. I guess they try and attach themselves uh, to other people. He seems to have went the George way. Yeah, well, anyway, sir, have a, have a good night. Thank you. Y- you bet. Take care. That was a strange deal indeed. All right, uh, to the phones and whoever this is in Florida. Hello. Hey, Art. Uh, how are you tonight, sir? Um, well, just fine, actually. Good. Um, you know, more and more I'm starting to think that uh, a lot of these mass shootings that have been occurring yes. tragically, yes. Uh, I'm starting to think that the government has a connection to it uh, when it comes to, you know, their... their uh, <laughs> their experiments with mind control and things. I know that might sound a little strange, but I, I got this strange feeling. When Sounds I was, a little uh, conspiratorial, to be honest. But you know what? I, you can't rule it out. It's so weird that you really can't, at this point, rule anything out. Well, well, well why I'm saying that is because of uh, 
you know, them trying to get gun control. And uh, I really think they're trying to get rid of the Second Amendment. I, I got that strange feeling whenever... I know. I every every single time, every single time, sir, it happens, uh, we have the same arguments about gun gun control, right? Every it's time. It's happening more and more. Yeah. And when I when I when I watched Obama uh, talking the other day about it, he was I just got the strange. He was pushing it. He was just. Yeah, I know. You know I know. Like, I know. I know. And I, here's here's what I have to say about it. Okay. Um, and I I think I said this on Facebook. We don't need gun control. We need mental health. What happened? Uh, Ronald Reagan was um, a president that I very much admired. But he did something during his tenure that I did not admire that much. He basically opened the doors of the mental asylums across America, and out they went. Now, I think we have a mental health problem, not a gun problem. Guns are just things. People are the ones who decide to use them, and a decision to use one randomly as in going into a school and shooting up a bunch of people so if that quote was accurate, you can be in the news. That's crazy, isn't it? C-R-A-Z-Y, crazy. So that's just my opinion. I understand there are many, but that's mine. And um, we don't need gun control. We need control of people. Anyway. We have open lines tonight. Anything you want to talk about, I've got a special line. And if you think you're married to an alien, that's right. It's called I'm married to an alien line. If you're married to an alien, call me at area code 575-208-7787. Let me give that one more time because it's not a normal number we give out. Area code 575 208 Seven seven eight seven. That said, let's. Well, no. Wait a minute. There we go. We've got one. Uh, are you married to an alien? Hello. Going once, going twice. He hung up. See, she was probably lurking in the background. Let's go to the state of Virginia. You're on the air. Hello. Hi, this is John at Danville, Virginia. Yes, John. Did you uh, get the uh, sheet music poster that I sent you uh, for somewhere in time? I did not. Okay. Been looking for a large brown vanilla envelope. The wife and I were out digging in an abandoned thrift store. It's about a uh, three-foot by two-foot poster of somewhere in time with sheet music on the back. Wow. I will look for it. All right, uh, one more quick point. I have a possibility to interview for a 911 dispatch position in a couple of weeks. Any advice? Uh-huh. Um, sure. My advice is um, before you do it, think very, very hard because it it's a very, very hard job. I'm not saying don't do it. It's a great public service. Here's what I'm saying. I worked as a 911 dispatcher in Monterey County for a year. And for about half that time, you're in training. So they spend a very great deal of money training you. Uh, But it's a tough job. It's a really tough job. And it's it's such a hard job that uh, you've got to decide what kind of person you are. Now, if you're the kind of person who can just, like, erase work when you're done and go home and live your life, then fine. The job is for you. If you cannot do that, then don't do it. Because you've got lives in your hand every day. People live and die by your decisions. And even if you make the right decisions, having people live and die while, you know, on your watch is going to get to you. So think very hard before you begin training because it's a lot of training and a lot of work and, you know, it will, uh, it'll, it'll drain your soul if you're not careful. 
Let's go to Aaron on Skype. Hello, Aaron. Hi, Art. Hi. Um, I, I want to uh, talk about Mel's Hole. I was wondering um, <clears throat> if you've had any contact with him after the 2002. No. No. Uh, the last word I had that was uh, was that Mel um, was ill and he went to Australia, and that is the last word. So, based on, you know, everything you know, I mean, you've had private conversations with him and stuff, is there anything you have that could, that you could pursue to advance the story, or? Well, there are some recent photographs, uh, of what is said to be Mel's Hole. Uh, now I don't know if it's true up near Ellensburg. I don't know if it's true or not. But I do have somebody looking into Mel's hole. I don't, I don't want to go too far into it, but the answer to your question is yes, I'm pursuing info. Yeah, actually, I, I sent you a, an email a couple months ago, uh, yeah, with a picture that I took from the, from the street in yeah. Ellensburg. Uh, yes. It was actually, uh, yeah, you posted it on the website. It got like 6,000 views. Uh huh. So, uh. Was that in your opinion, Mel's hole? I don't know. It's really strange on Google Earth. Um, it's like uh, this area is like all like plowed in a circular pattern, and there's like a a a a hole like in the middle. And measuring it on Google Earth, it's about it's about nine feet in diameter, like Mel said. Uh, so uh, you know, I went out there and and just. Uh, you know, took a picture from the road. I didn't want to trespass on. All right. Well, look, keep me informed. And if you do any investigation, uh, please contact me right away. That's all I can say. And, and I do know a little more, but I, I don't want to talk out of school here. Outside the country, uh, Jaffe, I believe it is. Hello. <laughs> no, 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 no. No? Oh, are we live, Art? Well, yeah, sure. When I say oh, you're on the on. air, when, when I, I say I something like on. you're on the air, that has meaning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, I'm a newbie to Skype, and I what I was I was kind of struggling with was uh, getting uh, uh, to exchange uh, what is it uh, contact information. So, but you don't uh, have to see. You don't. Okay, listen. You don't have to exchange contact information. All you've right. got to do is put in add, and then. By the way, where are you? I am in South Korea. South Korea, okay. So you just add MITD55, and yep. voila, we appear in your contacts. Yeah. Then after that, when you hit it, here you are. You know what's really funny is I just I was just testing, actually. You know, I was just testing to see what was wrong because I tried like three times. This is the third time now I try to get uh, you to, to, well, you know, to, for us to exchange contact information. Yeah. And uh, it, it it just out of the blue I called and then I tried to disconnect because it's like holy holy camoly, you know. Yes. Uh, we're uh, you know I don't this is not good. I want to get out of here. So <laughs> you got me now. I'm, I'm all right. Kinda, cool. Where uh, what part of South Korea? Uh, it's a couple hours south of Seoul. Okay. I've been here since uh, 2002. All right. And, uh, it's, it's 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 a fascinating experience, you know. That's that's for darn sure. Are you so. there in the military or as a civilian? I've I've been working here uh, uh, since uh, 2002 as a professional elf. That's, that's seriously. English. Yeah, I, you know, I'm a big guy and everything, but uh, I've managed to you know make a fair deal of money that way. Wow. Yeah. All, all, not even just Christmas either, but all, all, all times of the year. So you work in Korea as a professional elf. Yeah, absolutely. I've actually, yeah, absolutely. Hey, so this is career sets night. Some people back sometimes, <laughs> but uh, kind of catches them off guard. But that's that's the deal. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. Um, hey, but, how how yeah. do the how do the South Koreans like you? Uh, it's problematic. It's problematic. So, uh, it's, it's a mixed bag, really. Me personally, or just foreigners in general? Well, both. Well, I, you know, I, I, I'm married to a Korean lady, and, uh, uh it's been that way for a few years now, so. Koreans uh, have some of the most beautiful women in the world. They do. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah. You won't hear any argument from me, uh, I as, bet. As, as, <laughs> as far as that goes. But uh, let me let me tell. I'll let you in on something here, uh, uh, Art. Before you let me go, professional elf 
English language facilitator. Trademark it, baby. <laughs> it's a joke. I, mean, I, I got pulling it. Pulling your leg. Yeah, I got it. All right, thanks. I got to okay. go. Uh, take care. Professional elf. <laughs> yes. Uh, he wouldn't argue with that, would he? No, it don't. This is Midnight in the Desert. We'll be right back. Take a ride from the high desert and the great American Southwest. This is Midnight in the Desert, exclusively on the Dark Matter Digital Network. To call the show, dial 1-952-CALL-ART. That's 1-952-225-5278. Everything is jammed about the only one who could get through would be somebody outside the country. And that's by using Skype. It's a free call. Put in M-I-T-D-55. And join us. Be glad to have you. Also, we have we have a very special line tonight. I'm, ma- I'm married to an alien line. If you think you're married to an alien, and there must be many of you, and I understand your reluctance to talk about it. In fact, you better be sure that you're alone when you talk about it. And you better be sure that your alien mate is not listening. Because, well, you know why. <laughs> so if you're married to an alien, area code 575-208-7787. 575-208-7787. With that in mind, to that very line, and you are on the air, are you truly married to an alien? Hello? Hello, hello. It says you're on the air. Me? You. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> we talked earlier. Um, you, you got to be there when I say hello. Was the, uh, yes, yes. Um, her grandfather was a foundling, which, like I was telling you, I'm not necessarily sure what what the parameters of an alien is. Uh, well, look, uh, you don't call up a radio program yeah. that's looking for people who are married to an alien mm-hmm. if you're not sure you're married to an alien. Well, all chicks are aliens. I didn't say that out loud, did I? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, are you? Uh, yes. I don't even Go know ahead. Where to begin. I mean, uh, I I would begin at the beginning, and uh, as I mentioned before, yeah. I picked up the line. I'd make doggone sure that she wasn't listening to you. I know. <laughs> um. Yeah, I know. Yeah, she's in there watching. Uh, Blue Bloods. <laughs> She's watching Blue Bloods, huh? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Every, everybody worships this person. She's By the way, have you, have, have you, have you, sir, have you seen her bleed? No, not necessarily. No. Okay. And her skin is smooth, like uh, no mold, no none of that nonsense. So, what about her eyes? Uh, dark. Dark, huh? Foreboding? Black, almost like black. Yeah. Black, black eyes. Really? Doesn't this, I mean, don't you sometimes go to bed and look over and go, woo uh, Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly, huh? Yeah, when she whopped me with a pillow or adjusting herself <laughs> or getting too hot. <laughs> <laughs> I've been touched by a hand that was about 200 degrees at night. Really? Yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. At 200 degrees, you would be scorched. (laughs) Yeah, I just, I might have exaggerated that one, but okay. So Uh, she's hot stuff. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) All right, listen, I'm going to terminate this. Uh, Thank you. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't want you to. One question for you before we go. Yes, yes. If you don't mind. Yes. I'm sorry for wasting everybody's time, but. What happened to Ted Rice? Who's Ted Rice? The Cosmic Connector. The Cosmic Connector. Who's remember he? Remember him? No. You don't remember? No. He was one of your... One of my what? Part of your competition, but not really. He had a television show about... Oh, I, I never saw it. Years.
years ago. You yeah. never met the man? No. That's crazy. Never okay. even heard of him. Uh, but but uh, uh, Billy so, Goodman. But other than that, thank you. Okay, thank you you're you're me. very welcome. Sorry, I just don't remember him. Unless uh, unless that was a pseudo name. Uh, I think I might have heard Billy Goodman at the end. If I did, uh, yes, indeed, Billy Goodman was uh, a competitor of mine and a friend too. Uh, Billy and I stayed in touch years and years and years later. I think I heard him say Billy Goodman at the end that that was his radio name. If it was, yes, I know Billy. Knew Billy, I'm sorry, he's passed away now, but uh, he did a show very much like this one in Las Vegas uh, at the time I did it. Uh, I think he's still on the line. Is that who you're talking about? Yes. Billy Goodman? Yes. Oh, and heck he yeah, the, the, sure, the of course. With Gloria Euphoria? Um, absolutely. Was a great guy. Uh, he and I had a lot of fun yeah. together. So, I, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry he passed away. Again. Yeah, sorry he passed away, and uh, he's very much missed. But he picked up on the same kind of stuff that I was doing back then. And uh, that's a lot of years ago in Las Vegas. That brings back memories indeed. Let's go to, uh, I think it is Krista. Is that correct on, on Skype? We're through. We're through. Krista? Hi. I, uh, hello there. Hi, uh, this is uh, Stan and Krista from Esperance, Washington. Welcome to the program. Hi, uh, thank you, Roswells, and uh, yeah, this is Stan J on Bell Gap. Um, I, my wife has a story about the uh, a, a ghost that she encountered that she's going to tell you about. All right. So you you made the call, and then she gets to do the talk. <laughs> We're, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm coaching her through it. I, I've been listening to you for years, and, and she's I, a newbie. Well, okay. I grew up listening to you, actually. Really? Yes, I, I grew up like through my grandparents. My grandparents listened to you, and I, <laughs> like, I, I, I so I love hearing my that stuff. Like my, like nightmares. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would wake up, I would wake up, and you were playing on the radio. So. <laughs> Okay. They'd leave the radio on, and, and, and you would come on, and the yes. kids would all hear the scary stories and stuff. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Um, no, so I, uh, when, when, I was, uh, when I was in junior high, we went to, uh, we, we, we went to... Um, Whisper it. Charleston? We, we went to, uh, we, we. No. You're, you know what? You're really nervous, aren't you? Yeah. I am. <laughs> All right, just relax. Take a nice, deep breath. Uh, when you were in junior high, you went to, it sounded like Charleston. Is that right? It was in the south. We'll, we'll just, we'll, we'll. <laughs> Charleston is a beautiful city. All the old we, buildings. We, well, it's yes. Gorgeous. So we went, we went to Charleston. Okay. We, um, we we went on this ghost tour and it was my very first experience with a ghost with anything ghost related. Okay. And um and then what? Anyway, as as she was walking <laughs> along uh during the ghost tour, uh she felt something tap her on the back. Okay. And as she turned around, I'm trying to help her along. She's very nervous. There was, no, there was nothing there, but there was there was a there there was a candle that appeared to be lit that okay. nobody else saw. There absolutely nobody else saw. Okay. So it was a basically a ghost candle. And supposedly, in in this specific, this this specific house, um, that that was what happened. People. People would see this specific candle being lit, but okay. Are you no, were on no, a you you said you candle. okay you said you were on a tour right? Yes. So there were others there. There and were other people. It was a group of other middle school students, and everybody with you did not see the candle that you saw. Is that correct? That there was one other person that I talked to after the fact that saw this candle being lit. Uh huh. But. Nobody else actually saw the candle. The, the candle lit. So she had somebody, a, 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 a witness to this. It wasn't just her. 
I wonder why just two, when there's so many, why only two would see it, especially when it was, you know, like the legend of the place, right? Yeah. We were also, so the the girl that, that actually experienced this, she actually also felt a tug. A tug? She was the only other person that I spoke to in my specific group that felt a tug on her shoulder. Wow. Were you guys in, like, the very back or something? We were. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. All right. Now, I've got a question for you, too. All uh-huh. right. Um, are, you're in the same room? Yes. So, as you look at each other, I mean, really examine each other, is there anything somewhat alien about the other? <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, this is I not think a joke. My wife might have a more interesting <laughs> answer to that question than I would. All right. Um, he he definitely. Mm. <laughs> no, spill it. Go ahead. Let well, it out. He, he he definitely has a more an open. He's definitely much more open to the prospect of aliens Stop. and ghosts. Well, well that, that, you know, that doesn't... I, I try yeah. mind control art, and it doesn't work. That's the only problem. I, I, I think I can debunk that. Well, when she tries it on you, does it work? Yes. Yes. See, there you have it. <laughs> All right. Uh, yet another happy couple, human and hybrid. Uh, you two have a wonderful night, and thank you for the call. You, you, you too, well. Art. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Um, let's go to the phones. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. hello? Yes, hello. Hey, hey. Can you hear me? I hear you. Okay. Um, yes, I'm hoping that you'll have David Jacobs back on again. Depend on because, it. Uh, yes. Actually, wanna... actually, the truth is, I'll tell you what, it's going to be a while, but he's already scheduled. Uh, there's no way I could not bring Dr. Jacobs back. What he said was too huh, mind-blowing, frankly, uh, to not get a follow-up. Well, see, I wanted to say something about what he mentioned about people having telepathy. Sure. I had some UFO experiences, and I met this very strange man after I had them. Well, not only to that person call me on the phone and tell me what I was thinking. I also watched them walk out of their own body oh into my. someone else's. And that I wondered if he could tell us whether or not anyone else had ever mentioned that. Well, it's something that you wouldn't keep quiet uh, about, I would think. Uh, somebody walking out of a body into another body. Yikes. Um, so, yes, um uh, Number one, he's scheduled. Number two, yes, you can ask him that. <sighs> that show really was, for me, a mind blower in, in every way. In fact, if you are a time traveler and you can go back and listen to the Dr. Jacobs show, do it. Uh, that's one show you don't want to miss. Trust me on this. If you're a time traveler, do it. Barbara on Skype, you're on the air. Yeah, hi. Hi. Hey, Art, I'm sorry you're having trouble there. Oh, and, that's uh, all right. I, I hope things work out nicely. I do, too. Um, that's really my hope. But anyway, I wanted to tell you this story. Uh, it's kind of a strange one, and I know people may have trouble with it, but it is a true story. Okay. Um, a few years ago, my sister passed away. She was very ill. Sorry. And uh, she was in the hospital. Right. And... We were called in. She was in ICU. We called in by the nurse. Things did not, you know, were going badly. Right. And my mom and my niece, her daughter, and I went in. My nephew, her son, was on his way. We all gathered around the bed. Um, She was hooked up to a lot of tubes, her blood pressure, her heart monitor. And uh, they had her bed cranked up in a sitting position because she had trouble breathing and she was on an oxygen mask which she had been on for days. She could not breathe right. without the oxygen. Got it. At one point, I saw her blood pressure fall very, very low. She began to flatline. Right. And the nurse said to me, 
she's passing. Uh huh. I looked at my sister. My mother was, you know, very close to my sister and crying. I told my sister, I looked at her, and I, she had been awake for all of this and was still there with us. I looked at her and I said, please don't leave us. Come back as a ghost. Oh now, I hope that's not sound like a terrible thing, but I didn't want to lose my sister. I understand. Um, my sister actually was a little surprised and looked up at me. Um, and she passed. Wow. My mom was crying terribly hard, and my niece was crying, and I was crying. Of course. And after a little while of us all just standing there crying, the nurse said, I have another room you can all gather in. I, you know, let's go to the other room. Right. We all began to walk out slowly. I was the last. They were pulling the tubes. She had no blood pressure. She had a flat line. No heart rate, was not breathing. They took the mask off my sister. She had not been off this mask in a week. She was totally gone. I turned and looked at her as we left the room, and I saw her speaking. I saw her mouth forming words. I just stood there. I told my mother, I said, do you see that? She's talking. My mother didn't seem to acknowledge it. She was just too upset. I couldn't hear her, but I could plainly see her mouth forming words, not slowly, fast. You are talking about the body of your sister, or the physical body of your sister, not a ghostly figure, but... That's right, the physical well, body. You, you do understand that it is possible that muscles and nerves... Yes, but I saw words being formed. Wow. I, I saw her... She was not spasming. God. I, I do know horrible. about that. Um, okay. And I didn't know what to, to think. Um, I still have never heard of a story like this. Nor have I. I, I am a nurse. Yeah, I this is absolutely s- a new one on me. Uh, yes, were you and that's a- why I wanted to tell you this, because I have never heard of this before. And you could not make out any of the words? I was very far across the room. And I, to this day, I regret so much that I did not walk over, but I was just so stunned. I just looked at her, and nobody else saw this. I could see that her, her lips were actually, she was speaking. I could see her forming words with her lips. I could not huh. understand. She was speaking very fast. Well, um, that's what happened. Yeah, that's an amazing, amazing story, and maybe you can be comforted uh, in the fact that she tried. Well, that's the only thing I can think of, and I never, I will always regret that I did not understand what she was trying to say, except that maybe she was trying to tell me I'm not gone, and I wanted to tell the story because I know we are all wondering, you know, what's next? You bet. And... I, I'm telling the truth, and believe me, oh, I, I believe am as you. sane as, you oh. know, can be. I believe you, and that's a and, and heck I saw of a story. That. Well, anyway, Art, it is nice to have you back. I've never gotten to take you tell you that, so thank you. Um, it's wonderful. Thank you so much, and thank you for that story. I, here's what I would say. We uh, explore all the time, you know, what might be coming next. It is possible that um, she did form words uh, and that it was done essentially from the other side, you know, the, the physical manipulation. It's also possible that we don't understand all we think we do about the process of dying. And I, I know scientifically they say, look, flatlined, not breathing, no heartbeat, no mental activity, dead, right? But I don't think we understand it all, and I, I don't think it is nearly as instantaneous as we believe it to be. But these are, you know, all things we, we mortal humans can only wonder about, short of absolute science that tells us what death is conclusively, 
We don't know. There may be a kind of consciousness that we don't understand that continues. Anyway. Anyway, I'm sure she certainly loves you. So that's what I'd take away from that is comfort that she was trying to do what you asked her to do. From the high desert and the great American Southwest, this is Midnight in the Desert, raging through it. walk on the wild side of midnight from the kingdom of nye this is midnight in the desert with art bell please call the show at 1-952-225-5278 that's 1-952-CALL-ART that's it all right the only place we've got any kind of opening at all is the international line and uh no we don't take video by the way <laughs> the international line mitd55 on Skype, and that's a free call from anywhere in the world. Let's go to the phones and say, hey there, in Florida, you're on the air. Yes, Mr. Bell? Hi. Hey, my name's Ryan. I'm calling from Pensacola. I just had a quick question for you. Sure. When you had your dark matter show, you had um, some EVP, like a team who did EVPs on there. Yes. I was wondering if you plan on having them back on. Well, we've already had them back on. And, uh, they're going to be on again, I believe, toward Halloween. So if you're a, if you are a time traveler and you can listen to older shows, uh, you want to go back and listen to the GIS show. We did that some time ago. Okay. And is that the name of the group? Uh, yes, it is. The Ghost Investigators Society. Okay. Great. Yeah. That was just a really spooky show. And I was a trucker when I was listening to it. It really helped me pass the miles. You know, I often wondered, sir, if you were out in the middle of essentially nowhere in a truck and you were hearing these voices like that um uh, how it would affect you it it must have been weird well i'd probably pull over and get some sleep if i started hearing voices like that <laughs> <laughs> all right well listen thank you we're going to have them back around halloween uh we believe so there you go okay well thank you all right thank you very much on skype uh, i think it's misty <laughs> Hi, Art. More than Misty. You? Misty and her husband. No, just me. Just you. Hello. I could sworn I heard a man's voice. Oh, uh, well, um, no. <laughs> no, I'm not married and live alone. Okay, in that case, uh, I would look around uh, very carefully right now and make sure uh, that there's nobody there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're scaring me now. <laughs> uh Go right ahead. Um, so I I wanted to to tell someone or a lot of people I guess that would believe a story. I've I've told this story before, but always to uh, like family members that that uh, are non-believers. Okay. But um, when I was 13, I started having memories of um, um an, an abduction experience um, oh, really? that happened to me and my family. And uh, when I was when I was about five, uh, four or five, um, and uh, it came the memories were traumatic and came back over about a two week period of time. And when I um when I talked to my parents about the particular situation that I remembered, um, they they validated that that these folks were at our house that got abducted with us, and they validated some things, but they didn't remember. Um, the spaceship or any of that. And, it, and let me tell you this story really quick. I, I woke up to a bunch of commotion in the house. There was a younger couple that had been, my father was in the military, and uh, this couple's uh, they, they were in the military as well. And they'd been playing cards when I got sent to bed that night. <laughs> and um, so I, I woke up to a bunch of commotion, uh, my dad hollering, um, just yelling and screaming coming out of the living room. 
And I come out of the hallway and I look and my dad looks at me directly in my face and I could tell that he forgot about me. The front door is open. Everybody's leaving and scrambling and he's like yelling at me, get get out, get in the car. And um, we go out and my dad has a Malibu, which he confirmed that for me later because I didn't know that at the time. But we got in the car and he used to race stock cars uh, also um, as, a, as a side thing that he liked to do. All right. So we all jump in the car. The younger couple is in the back seat, and I'm in the back seat with him, and, and my dad tries to start the car, and it doesn't, it won't go anywhere. And, and they all know what's going on, and the only thing I really know at that time is is that I needed, to, I wanted to take something from my bedroom or from the house with me. Even though I didn't have it, I had wanted to because I wanted to prove that this time um, that it really happened. So I think that it happened before. Uh, but I don't remember it before. I just know at the time I knew it had happened before. And the car wouldn't start, and the guy in the back seat says, uh, my, well, let's get in my car, Ray, you drive. And so my father and we all scramble, and they have a little Volkswagen, and we scramble in, and I'm in the back seat again, and I'm sitting in this younger couple's lap pretty much, and uh, Dad tries to start the car, and the car won't start. Right. And then everybody just... Everybody but me, just all the yelling and everything just stops. Everybody just turns off. And my dad gets out of the car, and then my mother gets out of the car, and then the couple that I'm on their lap, they're just like leaving me and, and, and bouncing me out, you know, off onto the seat as they get out of the car. And I see my mother walking around the car, and I, I just really wanted to go with her. So I get out of the car, and I start to try to follow her, and she's not there. And I look, and I see my father's feet lift up off the ground, and he just starts floating into the air. And I look up, and my mother is um, very close to uh, this huge, huge spaceship that uh, I can't see the sky. It's like above our house. And so you're saying they right were in the middle of being abducted. Yes, and I was still on the ground, and I could see all of them going up into this ship. And I didn't know what it was. I didn't know it was a ship. I mean, it was just little, you know. I didn't understand. Sure, I wasn't sure. afraid. I just, I did want to go with my mother, and I was having some anxiety about that. Of course. And then all of a sudden, I felt these, um, like, long fingers go around my waist from behind and lift me up off the ground. And I turned to try to see uh, what was behind me. And all I saw was, it, like... If you could imagine what a, a, a astronaut's helmet would look like, only it was like reflecting. That's all I saw was like that mask. Gotcha. And um, it, it was reflecting. I could see it reflecting. Light. All right, we don't have a lot of time, so what happened? It touched me with something cold yes. on the back of my neck, and that that was it. The next thing I remember, I woke up in my bed, and I was just beating the heck out of my neck trying to wipe this cold thing off and your parents were yeah. were back everybody was there yeah everybody was there including the couple that were asleep in the living room on the couch which was like that wouldn't have never have happened but they were there and my parents remembered that they were there the next morning as well and nobody they, remembered it and nobody remembered any of this experience except you they rem they remembered that my dad had some car trouble and that and that the the couple that was there had car trouble and they said that's why they spent the night. Wow. You know, if I were you, I would go and get myself hypnotized, I think. And uh and try and find out if that's the truth. I mean it's it's possible that as a youngster you form some kind of memory that, that wasn't real. I'm not saying it's uh a false story. I'm saying that it may or may not be a real memory, if, but if it were me and I had a memory like that, I'd sure as heck want to know if it was real. So there is that. You might think about it. Uh, Sharky, outside the country somewhere. Hello. Oh, hey, Art. Hey, where are you? Um, I'm actually in uh, Canada, Ontario, to be, to be specific. Oh, uh, you're uh, on the wrong line. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Sharky, I'm sorry. Got to go. Um, try us on the uh, North American line. Um, that's for people outside of North America, which is MITD55. If you're outside of North America, MITD55. If you're married to an alien, 
We've had some pretty good ones tonight. If you're married to an alien, then you can call I'm Married to an Alien line. And that number is area code 575-208-7787. I know I don't give that out enough. I'm sorry. When we have a special line, area code 575-208-7787. Hey, you know what? I also should open the first-time caller line. If you have never called the show, wherever you are, it's area code 775-285-5800. That's for first-time callers, 775-285-5800. Okay, let's go to how about here. Uh, I think we're going to California somewhere. Hi. Hi. Yes, this is John, Apple Valley, California. Yo. Hey, so I uh, wanted to share a, I guess you would say a time traveling out of body experience, kind of going with your show the other night. Okay. All right. I was uh, 18 at the time, living probably 18 or 20, and living at home. And uh, now let me preface this by saying out of body experiences aren't something that fits my religious beliefs. It's okay. not something I, I would want. So I went to sleep this particular night, and when I woke up, I realized that it was daylight, and I my room, my bedroom, was reverting back to when I was a little boy. Oh. And, and I could feel myself reverting back to a child. Really? And before I knew it, I was nine again, sitting on the floor, playing with my toys, and I could hear my mother calling me. Wow. And and I realized at this moment that I was out of my body, and it freaked me out. And you and realized I, that you were back in time? That's what it felt. It felt as though I was back in time when, to when I was nine years old. Were you physically identical? I don't, I don't know. It, it felt as though like I regressed into myself back right. then. Right, right. If that makes sense. It, it does. It does. And then, so I realized I was having this experience, and it frightened me, and I wheeled myself back into my body, and it took a lot of effort. And finally, like with a slam, boom, I was in my body, and I, like I had been underwater for five minutes. I came up <gasps> gasping for air, and my heart was racing. Right. And uh, so it took me a while to go back to sleep, as you can imagine. I can. And I had... I had this exact same experience happen three times in a row that same night. Wow. And never since? No, never since. So that that night I remembered the movie, the uh, Christopher Reeve movie, Somewhere in Time. Ah, uh, yes. So I turned on the radio to, to tether myself to the here and now. And uh, and it worked, and I, I went to sleep and didn't have any other experiences. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you got yeah, you got my show and uh, totally <laughs> lost it. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, well, no. that's an amazing story, and maybe, who knows, maybe three times in one night, maybe you were back. Um, I think it happens. It sure felt real. Well, what do we know about time, right? We think it's exactly. linear and just progresses, and you can never move within or beyond the, the the present march of time, but maybe you can. Thank you very much for the call. Thank you. Good one. Um, on our first time caller line, you are on the air. Hello. Hi. Good Hi. evening. Good morning. <laughs> yes, yes, whatever. Um, yes. Um, uh, thanks for taking my call. The reason I'm calling, I'm a, I'm a long-time listener of you, and I appreciate your radio shows. Um, the reason I'm calling is because uh, when I was um, a very little girl, um, into my teens and into my, even as an adult, I've had night terrors, night terrors that my siblings would just, I'd wake up and they were in my room, what are you doing? And they'd say, I'd be screaming and and throwing stuff, and I wouldn't remember anything. Oh, night terrors so, like, are terrible. They are. They're they're horrible. My husband sleeps with one eye open. Believe me, <laughs> <laughs> he's I do. still not used to them. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, one in particular, uh, I, I had to have been seven or eight years old, you know, second grade, and uh, something was in my my bed with me. Uh, the only way I could explain it is, it was slimy and 
Yeah. I had a thorn. It, it was at the end of my bed where my feet would go. And yes. Every time my feet would touch it, I, I, I would start hollering. And finally my dad came and he took he took whatever was inside my bed and threw it away in my trash can. And to this day, I have no idea what it was. Okay, so this this was it. not part of a night terror. This was the real McCoy. Yes. Oh, yeah. I remember everything. My, my dad said he uh, he just kind of winks at me. He's like, oh, Sylvia, it was just a nightmare. And I'm like, no, it really happened. You were there. He doesn't seem to remember it, but it was it was some sort of grayish, oh. jellyish type matter. I, to this day, I have no idea what it was. Not something you want to feel with your feet, do you? No, that's, yeah, it was pretty disgusting. Well, listen, it, more, what, what took you so long to call? Uh, well, you know, I, I, I get scared calling radio shows. And people, you know, really, I don't know. I just, I don't know. No. Nah, we're easy. We're really easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a big fan of you. I really am. I'm a huge fan of you. Well, thank you. And th- thanks for the first time call, really. All right. Okay. Have a good evening. You take care. Going straight to the alien. I'm married to an alien line. You're on the air. Oh, hey, Art, how you doing? Uh, I'm this okay. Is Mark, Mark from Van Nuys, and um, I'm really scared calling in because I just found this out recently, and I'm afraid to actually ask her about it. You know. Well, I I understand the trepidation. Um, what? Let Let's try this. Uh, so we're sure. What has led you to believe that she? Well, is one of them. Well, I've been, I would have a lot of dreams, um, you know, like UFO related dreams and, and whatnot, but I, I could never put my finger on it. Yeah, but that's you. That's you, not right. her. Well, I'll tell you what happened recently. Recently, I would get up uh, the night to use the bathroom, I would look over, and she's shape shifting on me while she's in bed. Oh, that's a big tip right there. Yeah. And, and what was she shape shifting into, if I can ask? Well, she'd be in a regular form and it, 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 like a like a, a reptilian oh. type skin. Ah. And it's happened like three times now. Uh, and uh, that's a real mood uh, crusher. You, I mean, when you look over, yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Did you have you had the guts yet to even talk to her about it? No, that's what I was just saying. I'm really afraid. I would be and, very careful about yeah. bringing this up. Uh, well, honey, no, I'm just I'm talking to Ron. Oh God, you heard that? I take it. <laughs> well, you know, um, I picture reptilian created pieces of whoever we were just talking to. All over the room right now. Mm-mm-mm. First time caller line, you're on the air. Hello. Hi, Art. This is Connor in Oklahoma. Um, what do you What do you think? I, uh, I don't know. Maybe you weren't listening, Connor. What do you think happened to that last caller? Oh, that that's easy, Art. He 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 was got. I mean, she got him. Gutted him. Oh yeah. Eviscerated him. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a goner, that's for sure. All right, well, I you know I want these people who are calling this line to be really really careful because, well, because of what you just heard. All right, anyway, what's up? Scary stuff. Um, well, Art, I was going to call about uh some stuff that happened to me. Uh, I believe as a small child, I had a series of encounters with I guess what most people would consider a demon. Really. A demon. Yeah, I'd say so. This is the first time you've ever called this program. It is. It is. What kind of demon? Well, I guess I should have just kind of started. I mean, I uh, I must have been about... I have very distinct memories of being a young child, maybe four, and... Yeah. Remember my parents put me down to go to bed. Right. They would leave the room. Sure. And then after a couple minutes or so, I would hear a voice start talking to me, usually from behind my bed or from another part of the room. And 
it's hard to remember distinct things that it would say, but it was very uh, demented and kind of, I don't know, it liked making me upset. Probably then, not hard to do with a four-year-old. I'm sure you were totally freaking out. Oh, yeah, totally. And so, and, it, and you know, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm a little nervous. It's all right. Take a deep breath. Try to remember. So, yeah, I have these distinct memories, though. Of, I would, they would put me to bed. I'd hear this voice. I'd cry. It'd go away. They'd come back in the room. They'd check things out. They'd leave because there there wouldn't be anything there, and they wouldn't hear anything. And then a couple minutes later, it'd start talking to me again. And uh, the only thing that I remember, the only sentence I really distinctly remember is one time it asked me if I wanted to die. Oh, man. Yeah. And um, how, does a four, a, how does a four-year-old answer that question? Exactly. Um, I think I, I, I can't remember what I said to that. Well, if your parents had you uh, trained as a polite youngster, you would have said, no, thank you. Right. <laughs> I'm, I, you know, I, I, I'm not sure. You know, I would have been pretty freaked out. But, uh, um, but no, otherwise, uh, I, I did. I, it's hard to tell if these were, if I, if I was, yeah, I would hear it, and I, I I have waking memories of that that have never gone away from me. Um, I never, for, I just never forgot them. And they, and you never will uh, forget them. Thank you. It's horrible, 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 horrible. All right. Uh, so all the lines are filling, 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 and full. Uh, let me go to uh, Skype and say hi, Tom. Hello, Art. Hi, Roswell. Thank long you. Long-time listener. Thank you. Having a panic attack. <laughs> right now? Oh, you know, gee, the anxiety in the gut of just getting on the air is just incredible. Well, um, you'll get over it. I, I'll take you on. I'm trying to breathe deep. Yeah, deep breath. But you know those questions that you have, those those ones that sort of burn into your soul? Yes. I've got a bunch of those, too, just like yours. Sure. That after-death stuff? What happens to people when they die? It's the biggest question for all of mankind. There's no question about it. And I try to do shows that attempt to answer that question. It's not answered yet for me, not not absolutely. You know, there are some people I really envy them who have faith. You know, they have such absolute faith that, um, you know, there will be paradise or heaven or whatever waiting for them. Um, and I envy that. I have had a number of experiences actually talking to the dead. They, they well, then you know more. You know more my, than I do. In my imagination. Yeah, you know more than I do. If you've talked to the dead, you're ahead of me. And you know, it's really pretty easy. Um, I, I'm I'm like 73. I'm about your age, and I have outlived just all but a very small handful of my friends. Well, I'm 70. So you're three years older. Right, right. Uh-huh. Yeah, let's not stretch it. Yes. I'll be there soon enough. Or so, not. So back in 99, I'm standing in front of the library waiting for it to open, and my mother pops in, sort of in your in your mind's eye, in your imagination, and sure. starts talking to me. Well, I thought, you know, I'm just imagining this. And she's saying, you know, I just left the body, and... Uh, they won't let me pass over because I've got too many unresolved conflicts. Really? So she stayed with me like that for about six years. Wow. And I just kind of, you know, discounted it as imagination. But five days later, after I had the first vision, I get a postcard in the mail from my brother who is, you know, misplaced my phone number and couldn't call me when she died. Right. So he sends me a postcard and telling me that he, that, you know, the time that she passed. And sure enough, it was exactly the time I was standing in front of the library. Wow. Um, 
and she was really good at conflict. Oh man, she was, you know, she was had that destructive streak. She'd go after people that she thought were doing wrong things, and she just created so much conflict for herself. So you know, that was her that was her sin. She was like begging forgiveness. I said, Ma, you know, don't beg forgiveness from me. I know you did all you did the best you could. And I take it she she finally did after six years pass on. Well, she uh, she kind of faded away. She just gradually faded away, and uh, I, I don't see her anymore. That that was back in '99, so you know I, I don't I don't see her anymore. Pretty but amazing since then, story. Anyway. I have had a number of people appear in my imagination just like that. Uh, I used to rent rooms, you know, being in here in Honolulu, you can hardly afford an apartment alone. So, you know, you rent out the bedrooms sure. to whoever, whoever will rent them. And I, at the early 80s, I was renting to uh, college students. Yes. And um, this one lab stayed, stayed the, you know, the usual year like they do. And um, I kept seeing him in my imagination standing right there at the corner of the hallway kind of on the other side of my computer desk, looking at me. You know, this occurred so many times. Finally, I just talked to him, and I said, I said, Johnny, are you uh, are you out of the body? And he said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I died of AIDS in 87. Oh, my God. And I said to him, uh, well, what are you doing here looking at me? Didn't you, aren't you supposed to go somewhere? And he said, well... I don't know. I always thought about you because you're the only man that ever loved me. You washed my clothes for nothing. You cooked for me for nothing while I was going to school. You treated me better than anybody else I ever knew. You treated me better than my father. And that's kind of like I just feel like I'm attracted to you. And when I'm, when I'm with you, your heart energy seems to dispel the negative stuff that's on this side that's trying to get after me. Yeah, I think most of the negative stuff is on this side. Thank you very much for the call. At least I certainly hope it's that way, don't you? That the negative stuff is uh, on this side and it's not so negative over there? Not a lot of time. First time caller line. You are on the air. Hello. Hello, Bell. Yes, sir. This is Steve from Syracuse. I, got, I love listening. You know what I thought? I haven't written it, but I was going to write Art Bell, Mr. Freedom of Speech Incarnate. I hope and so. You have no screeners, <laughs> and I'm so happy to have you on the line. I got good news. Yes, sir. Okay, the good news is I have a calling very much like St. Thomas Aquinas had or like Jesus had, where, where you're trying to care about the whole world and make it better. I could go into detail. I was born, uh, hey, I'm a, I was born on six days after D Day. I'm right, another Gemini, but I'm a Gemini monkey. And uh, you, you, you are living up to your, what I call thirty-three birth pass because you, you got a, you care. You're the best listener in the world, except for a psychologist. Second opinion I have, but <laughs> the good news is, oh, I love your sense of humor and your care for people, and you're, you're such. <laughs> okay, let me let me talk. I'm an autistic. I see. I was, okay. I was born. I was I was a twin. Born six days after D-Day, I think that's important. I think the whole world was praying like mad for that D-Day invasion. And uh, I was born six days after D-Day. And uh, what what I wanted to be when I was about two and a half, three years old, my mother was reading the Pied Piper of Hammond. Do you know that story? I do. do. I do. Well, I identify with him. I was all excited, and then her response was, he's evil. Well, boy, did that pop my balloons. I was guilt-ridden and self-doubting. Ah, you're not evil. I was 12. Okay, well, listen, you're not evil. I understand you are autistic, and you're definitely not evil. So I, I've got... Pathetic autistic I'm, savant. Right. Pathetic autistic savant. Remember that. Well, savant means genius in one category. I know. That's what I think about. I'm right, listen, I, I've got a break. Understanding the problems of the world to make oh, it better. Okay. I hope you do, but i got to go. Sorry. We've got a break, and I have to abide by these times. <laughs> 
This is Midnight in the Desert. Remember, when calling Midnight in the Desert, let the phone ring until answered. These calls are unscreened for your listening pleasure. Call 1-952-CALL-ART. That's 1-952-225-5278. You know, I just took a, a photograph of what the... Of what the studio looks like, uh, we're, we're in a seven minute break, right? And the North American screen is going berserk with Skype. I mean, there are calls behind calls behind calls. And, uh, the international's going, first time caller is going, the I'm married to an alien line is going, and right now overseas is where we're going. Hi, Ryan. Hey, how you doing, Art? I'm doing okay. Where are you? Um, I didn't know this was overseas. I'm yeah. actually in Pittsburgh. Oh, Ryan. You're <laughs> on the wrong line. Thank you, and uh, have a good night. Uh, sorry, those are the rules. <sighs> and uh, actually, I passed up other overseas callers because I had Ryan holding. So to whoever was trying to get in, give it another try, uh, those folks, uh, and I'll get you on. You know, as uh, as we're making rules... Once again, in, in the Skype world, to get hold of this show, MITD51 for North America and MITD55 for the rest of the world. Those rules are really important. Let us go to Jesse. Hi, Jesse. Hi. Uh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I've been listening to you for so long. Really? Um, I was, I'm calling in because I um, have a story about getting kicked out of the astral plane. Really? Were you out of yeah. body at the time? Uh, yes, I was. Uh, when I was in high school, um, my last two years of high school, I really started getting into doing like astral projection. I mean, I can understand getting kicked out of high school. I can understand getting kicked <laughs> out of a lot of things. But the astral plane, my goodness, what did you do? Well, I would, I went to this place, and I always just called it the, the cathedral okay. because it was a cathedral. Right. And um, I went in and I found this office at one point, and there was a big, like, black window behind the, this desk. Yes. And if you sat in the chair and you turn around, you could you could see stuff, um, like, like what? stuff that you would have no idea knowing. In other words, uh, you like were you, you, like, you're saying like you were that. in a different place. I'm sorry. You, it's like you were in a different place. Um, it, it's like you were, it's almost like, it's almost like, a, like a scrying okay. kind of glass or something. Yes. Because you could ask to see something and you'd see it. Okay. Got it. And then you could verify it once you, you know, were back in your body. All right. So, pray tell, what did you do to get booted from the plane? I'm not really sure, but I went into that office at one point and there was, there was a man in like a charcoal gray suit with, just brilliant blue eyes and white hair, and he turned around and said, you're not allowed to be here anymore. And he, like, snapped his fingers, and I haven't been able to get back. Wow. <laughs> um, well, I guess that's kind of sad. Um, I guess you feel like you did something wrong, but I'm sure you did not. Maybe you just it was, it was had a just real really... grouch. Surprising, I guess, because huh? I'd been there so many times, and huh. it was just, I don't know, it was unexpected. And so you've never been able to get back? Correct. Okay. Well, listen, thank you very much for the story. Um, I'm sorry to hear that. Can you imagine being able to get away to the astral plane uh, virtually at will, as she described, and then, I don't know, suddenly not being able to? Bummer. Um Outside the country somewhere, Peter. Uh, g'day, Art. Uh, Peter in Bendigo. Yes, sir. Um, I, this is a story of, that I experienced I had uh, about 17 years ago. I was at my ex's place. Yes. And I was trying to get to sleep. It was a very hot night. Uh, I had a fan at the end of the bed, and it was making a, this usual noise that they do. And um, But I could hear a whispering noise also, and... Uh, I was really annoyed because I was trying to sleep. I had to get to work early the next day. And uh, I could hear this whispering noise, and I intently listened to it more and more. 
And then I could understand it was actually uh, something speaking to me. Mm-hmm. And I heard something say, Peter, uh, get up or get get out or something like that. And uh, I think it was get up. And uh, so I went out to the hallway. I was really frightened at that point. I thought there, there was some sort of warning. And so uh, I went out to the hallway uh, to check on the kids. Mm-hmm. And I looked in one of the rooms and I saw... Uh, that my uh, stepdaughter seemed to be sleeping okay, so she was okay. So I went and checked on my son. Uh, he was fine. So then I checked the house and I checked the doors to make sure everything was closed. Sure. And uh, I still felt a, a sense of danger. So I went back to uh, my stepdaughter's room and I uh, just checked on her a bit further to see if she really was okay. And I noticed that she wasn't actually sleeping on her back. She was uh, on her, her chest was slipping between the wall and the bed. Mm. And uh, she was slipping down between the wall and the bed. Oh, God. And she was basically uh, suffocating. Yeah, that's dangerous. Uh, yeah, so I pulled her out um, and put her back on the bed, and she sort of she sat up in bed, and uh, she had one eye open, and the other one was closed. And uh, she sort of went into some sort of fit and, uh, and breathed very rapidly. And uh, I asked her if she was okay, and she, she nodded and said she was okay, and, and uh, she seemed to roll over and... Go back to sleep. I pulled the bed out away from the wall so it couldn't happen again. All right. Uh, you and, saved uh, your life. There's no question about it. And um, isn't it amazing, this sense of dread, this sense of danger that you felt that wouldn't go away until you got to it? Yeah. And it wouldn't let me sleep. Right. Uh, I couldn't sleep before that. Trust and me. when I went back to bed, I know. Uh, I was able to sleep. Uh, but when I woke up the next day, I told my ex about it, and she said she just... Uh, stared at the ceiling for hours after that and couldn't get back to sleep herself. Boy. Because uh, it fright- frightened her so much. <laughs> um, yeah. That's a precognitive warning, and I, I they're absolutely real. Thank you so much for that call. You saved a life. He saved a life. And I, I believe every single word of it. I've had precognitive experiences, one, and I know what it's like. Uh, it's not something you can ignore. It's like something that washes over you again and again and again and again, and it will nag at you and won't let you do anything else until you take care of it. It's amazing. Let's go to the first-time caller line. You're on the air. Hi. Hello. Hello. This is Eric from Ohio. Welcome. Welcome. Yes, and I am a first-time caller. All right. Listening to you for a long time. I'm a retired railroader, and you used to be a... A companion in the middle of the night going to and from work. So, All right. Really? We enjoy. Hey, the other night you had a gentleman on that was talking about the MIBs or the men in black. That's correct, yes. And he made reference several times to um, John Keel writing about him. That's right. And uh, I always loved his book. So, simple question. Did you ever have the opportunity to interview uh, John Keel. I did not. Okay. Uh, He seemed to have this thing with, well, he also talked about shadow people a lot, too, and tulpas and all that. And I I was going to call you in, try to call you then, but the fellow stole my thunder, and (laughs) he he explained it all. Well, it it was quite a show, Um, and shadow people is quite a topic. And I used to sort of I'm going to be honest with you. I kind of blew it off in my mind uh, when I began hearing from uh, callers about shadow people. And then suddenly it happened to me. And there's nothing like that to uh, turn you around and make you realize, you know, hey, guy, this is real. <laughs> well, I'm a night owl, and I'll sit at my workbench and... uh Sometimes I'll see stuff out of the corner of my eye, and I figure, well, 99% of them are just something that I can't explain, but who knows? Maybe yeah, and then all of a sudden, when you least expect it, here comes that 1%. Yes. Well, thank you. I I, I'm going to have to go because you've got okay, your... Okay, thank you. Right, take care. He turned his radio up. I guess he thought I ended the call or something. Um but no, indeed. Uh, let's go to Richard, somewhere outside the country. Hello. Hey, it's Richard from Northern Ireland. From where? Bless the North, Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. Okay, yes. Yes. Uh, Art, 
here's the thing. I'm married to a female from Texas, and I think she might be an alien. You're, uh, how, well, you're what? Talking to her on Skype? No, no, no. I'm married to her. You're married to her. And, and you think she's alien? Yeah, she's got her own language art. She has her own language, and she has, oh, really, and, and not only that art, my stepkids and my grandchildren are infected as well. They say the same things. Are you sure it's not American English that you're objecting to? It's really a foreign language? Oh, I never thought of that. I mean, I mean she, says, <laughs> oh, she says aluminum instead oh. of aluminum. <laughs> oh, Richard, you're so out of here. <laughs> See you later. Uh, Hi, Art. Yeah, yep. See ya. Let's talk to Michelle, also out of the country. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, this is Michelle in Japan. Hi, Michelle. Um, I wanted to tell you first of all. Um, do you have any plans to do a uh, uh, Antichrist line again sometime soon? Because I used to love when you would do those. You really like the Antichrist line? I loved those. They were just they were always so ridiculous and. And then you'd always scare the crap out of me every time you'd pull out that uh, that that Satan voice because I would never be prepared for it. <laughs> um, okay, Michelle. Um, yes, but, I will do an Antichrist line again. Okay. Well, I have a quick story for you. Okay. Um, I have no idea what this is, but for the I moved recently, and for the past three months or so, I've seen maybe three times. Um, I look out my window or out my balcony over at Mount Fuji, and I see what looks like like a flare or a firework or something. Oh. But it's hovering over the base of Mount Fuji, not near the top. But you know, kind of Michelle, base. I've been hearing this about Fuji uh, in Japan. I really have. I've heard other reports. Uh, have you talked to others? Uh, no, I haven't. I can't figure out what in the world it is. It looks like, a, like I said, like a firework or something, but it'll hover for about a minute or so, and then it'll fade away, and then sometimes another one will kind of just appear. It'll come up slowly, and then it'll hover, and then after a minute or two, it's gone. Weird. It makes no sense. It doesn't move around like a UFO right. story. It doesn't disappear like a flare or a firework would. Huh. Um, how about some pictures? You know, I tried that, but the problem is is that Mount Fuji is just far enough away that you can't see him really hardly in the pictures. It just shows up as a little tiny dot. Okay, well, um, you can see you it great need, with your eyes. Right. You what you would well need with a, would be a camera with a really good zoom lens. Yeah, and unfortunately I have an iPhone, and that's about it for camera for me. Gotcha. Well, iPhone doesn't do the trick. Uh, they're no, they're good cameras, this. but for anything at a distance, no way. But I am surprised you said you've heard this before. I have. I kind of want to know more about that because okay. I've been wondering what the heck it could be. And let me I'm not see what I can find. Uh, yeah, let me see what I can find out, Michelle. But yes, sure. there have been other sightings around Fuji. Uh, there's some stories on it, and I'll try and dig them out for you. Thanks. Appreciate it. You're very welcome, and have a good night. Going to Skype over here, Brave Hooves, really? That's your name? <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, no, it's Alexander. Um, uh, I like Brave Hooves. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, it's my it's my YouTube name. Anyways, okay. Um, I got a story for you. I I live in Portland, Oregon. I'm I'm not gonna say anything, but I'm the one who does your show at KXL. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, excellent. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, and I was like, I I need to call in. Anyways, um, I have the story. I went to this um with my dad. He does ghost hunting and stuff. Um, we went to go to this insane asylum. It's called Damish Insane Asylum. All right. There was this old church, and we went inside of the uh, the elevator. Um, when we stepped in there, it, it was almost like there was something wrong with time. Like we had we had this really dark feeling in our chest. Hmm. There were three. There were the people that were with us were my one of my really good friends, Shay, and his dad. Yes. We all stepped inside of this elevator, and um, the. Ten people that were around us, like the girls screaming, ah, ghosts, you know, they all vanished. Like it's like somebody pulled the head, like a headphone jack, right out of your ear. Kidding? Sound. Yeah, and w I said, where did they go? Yes. And I say, I need to get out of this elevator. We walk out of the elevator. I get a call from my phone, and the guy says we've been gone for four hours, and the cops were over there, waiting for us. Wow. Uh, so. Everybody had a little experience with time, and what a strange one, too. 
Yeah, yeah, it, it was really interesting. I still can't explain it. Wow. All right. Well, listen, thanks for taking care of us up there at KXL. Yeah, no problem. Have a good night. You, you too. Boy, that's strange. Um, there's something about time. Every now and then, there's a slip. Every now and then, somebody, uh, well, the kind of story you just heard, something like that happens. Or, like an earlier caller, every now and then, he slips into a state he was much younger. And then back again. Three times in one night, right? Time slips. Burlington, something or another, on the first time caller line, you're on the air. Hi, Art. Hi. It's Aaron calling from Ontario. Welcome. And uh, I have a story to tell you. Okay. Um, something that might uh, help you with your thoughts about the afterlife. Okay. When I was 12 years old, my father died, and um, I felt really, really sort of afraid to go and see him in his coffin. I wanted to remember him. I understand. He was alive, right? Sure, sure. So my grandfather, we were at my grandparents' house, his father's house, and um, my grandfather asked me, when I was going to see him, and I said, oh, I don't want to go and see him. And he said, why not? I said, well, I just rather remember him As the way he was. he was when he was alive. That's, that's, my grandfather you... assumed right away I was afraid. So he said, listen, the dead can't hurt you. Right. It, when they die, they're like a dog. It's the end of them. And he was sort of an atheistic person. My grandmother was very religious Catholic, but he was athe- atheist. Anyway, he was Russian as well. And um, he, after that, I kept hearing my grand, my father's voice call me in my ear, in my left ear. Really? And you know when your parent calls you and they want it, you want your attention? Yes. The, it was a certain way they would call you. Uh, yes, and you I, would know. I, you better pay yes. attention or else trouble comes. That's right. And um, my father was always very stickler about calling me in for supper and stuff. So it was like that call. And I would lay down, and as I would fall, be falling off to sleep, I would hear him call me in my left ear. And uh, I was 12 at the time. And uh, the following year, uh, in September, I was going to high school. Hon, I, I hate to I, do, I'm sorry to do this to you, but the show is over. You can probably hear the music in the background. I have to go. I am so sorry. That's okay. I'll call you again, Art, and I'll tell you the rest of the story. Please do. You're you're hereby authorized to use the first-time caller line again for that exact reason, because I had to cut you off. Well, listen, everybody. It has been a good one. I hope everybody lived through it. For now, um, I'm not going to say good night, America. I'm say good. I'm going to say good night because obviously we have cultivated people around the world who listen to this program in droves. Good night from the high desert. <laughs>